What's going on guys? AMG here, uh, Warrior Bet MMA, and we have UFC 246, Conor McGregor versus Donald Cerrone, going down on January 18th, main card starts at 9 Eastern Time, feels like it's been a while since we've been here, um, I believe it was a three week break, um, yeah, I'm glad UFC's back, and we have some bets this weekend, as always. So, I'm going to be breaking down the card, bottom to top. So, first we have Sabina Mazo versus JJ Aldrich. Let me start by saying I bet against Sabina Mazo her last fight. Um, it was a uh, epic fail, I would say. Shayna Dobson got kicked in the body in that first round. and Man, it felt like that was the end of her that night. She got kicked in the body once in the first round about a minute in, and she just shut down, dude. Uh, previous to that fight, I just I just didn't really see much in Sabina Mazo to like. I mean, she's got a tall, long frame. She's training at King's MMA. I know everyone's going to bring that up. She's got a good head coach and expect this, expect that. But I only go by what, I've, what I see on tape. And when I tape Sabina Mazo, I don't really see much. There's not much there. I know she's young. She could be growing. She's 5'7". She's got a 70-inch reach. But like I said, I just I just don't think there's much there right now. And until I see it, then I'll start believing it. Um, she ended up beating Shayna Dobson. Her UFC de debut was against Marina Moroz. Marina Moroz took it to her, man. Uh, she put it on her. It it looked like she was she never had a chance in that Marina Moroz fight. Um, she's fighting JJ Aldrich this weekend, and I just think JJ Aldrich is all around the better, more experienced fighter here. She's 27 years old, training partner for Rose Nama Yunus. I bet JJ Aldridge in the past actually better against uh, Lauren Mueller in her last fight. She came through 29-28 unanimous decision. Uh, and versus Macy Barber, she had a good first round. I know everyone's probably mentioned that, um, but in that first round against Macy Barber, man, she looked really fucking good. Uh, she took away that space. Macy Barber is great in space. If she has room to operate and you let her get off first, you're not going to win that fight versus Macy Barber. She's got incredible power. She's got great kicks, kicks for days. And um, in that first round, I thought J.J. Aldridge did a, a very good job of taking away that space. And she took it to Macy Barber. She won that first round. Uh, second round, she kind of slowed down a little bit. Maybe her output was a little high, a little bit too much. But uh, Macy Barber ended up catching her with a with a good shot. She ended up finishing her in that round, but I, I don't think there's any shame in losing to Macy Barber, albeit she's the probably one of the youngest fighters on the roster, but everyone knows Macy Barber is a real deal. So yeah, um, I just think overall this matchup, it's striker versus striker. That's exactly what this is, and I think J.J. Aldridge from the southpaw stance, she's got that one two. Her left hand is, is pretty powerful, and I just like what she does on the feet. And on the other side, Sabina Mazo, I don't think she moves her, her head very much. She spams the kick, the, her kicks a lot. While they were effective in her last fight, previous to that, I just thought it was more of just spamming the, kip, the kicks to keep your opponent off of you. And I just think J.J. Aldrich is going to come in with a similar game plan as to when she fought Macy Barber. And that was exactly... This, the key to success here is going to be taking away that space like she did versus Macy Barber, not giving her any room to kick, and just taking it to her. I think if she can replicate that fight, um, that game plan, I think it's going to work here. And I think JJ is going to win a unanimous decision here. She takes away the space, and I don't think Sabina Mazo's hands are up to par. JJ Aldridge is by far the better boxer. If she takes away the kicks... And uh, this fight is in boxing range for the majority of the fight. I think she can have a lot of ex lot of uh, success, and I think it's going to be an easy unanimous decision win for JJ Aldrich here. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I I gotta see it to believe it with Sabina Mazo. I don't think she's there yet. If she comes out here and beats JJ Aldrich, and we see she's evolved, I mean, more power to her. But right now, I just don't see it. I think JJ Aldrich is. By far the better mixed martial artist, so I'm going to take JJ Aldrich here by unanimous decision. 
Uh, next fight is Odie Osborne versus Brian Boom Killer. Uh, when I took a look at Odie Osborne, I saw a very explosive athlete, good kicker. Uh, he's got good Muay Thai. He's got good hands. So yeah, like I said, I, I saw a very explosive athlete. That's what I saw. Uh, with Brian Kelleher, he's 19 and 10. Um, he's coming off a loss versus Montel Jackson, Montel Jackson and John Lineker. There's really no shame in losing to both those guys. Audie Osborne, on the other hand, is making his UFC debut. And I think this fight's kind of simple. Um, it's striker versus striker for the, for the most part, but I think Brian Kelleher is going to have a little bit more versatility. He's going to have more... Uh, I think he's going to have more weapons to attack with here. He can grapple if he needs to. But I think it's pretty simple here. Like I said, it's going to be either Odie Osborne uh, takes out Brian Kelleher in the first round or the, the first half of the fight. Or it's going to be Brian Kelleher taking over in the second half of the fight. Because when I look back at Odie Osborne, I see a guy who who goes out there in the first round and he tries to put it on his opponents. And... He pretty much empties his gas tank. Uh, that's what I saw on tape. I just felt like he's he's a little over aggressive. I mean, he picks his shots very well. He's he's a good fighter. He's a good striker. But I just think he empties his gas tank way too much for my liking in that first round. And once he gets to the second and third round, he doesn't have a lot left. And I just feel like if you do that versus Brian Kelleher and you don't get him out of there in the first round... Um, it's going to be a tough go for rounds two and three. So it's either Audi Osborne via KO or maybe club and sub in that first round. Or it's going to be Brian Keller taking over in rounds two and three. Um, I have a bet in this fight. I actually give away a free bet. It's going to fight doesn't go to, to fight doesn't go to decision at minus 195. I put um, close to two units at stake there uh, to win one back. So yeah, um... I think it's pretty straightforward. It's going to be Odie Osborne in round one. If Brian Kelleher makes it to round two, you're going to see a young, inexperienced fighter with not a lot of gas left, and you're going to see Brian Kelleher take over. And I think Brian Kelleher is going to finish this guy in the second or third round. So, yeah. Uh, next fight we have... But, actually, as far as prediction goes, it's kind of tough to say, but... Um, I like that. That's why um, with some fights, I don't even have to make a decision. Um, I see a fight and I see his styles match up, and I know these both. Uh, there's a lot of ingredients in this fight to say that it's not going to decision, to where I don't even have to pick a side. Um, I go with sort of the middle ground, I guess you can say, and it's fight go to fight doesn't go to decision. But if you ask me, gun to my head, I guess I'll pick uh, Brian Keller. Uh, rounds two and three. I think he's uh, experienced enough to weather the storm in the first round and take over in rounds two and three. And I think he'll get the finish. Uh, next fight we have in the light heavyweight division. It's Alexa Kamer versus Justin Ledet. Alexa Kamer is fighting out of a uh, strong style fight team. 24 years old, coming off a win off the Contender Series. And he's fighting Justin Ledet, who's 9-2. He's coming off a loss versus Johnny Walker and Alexander Rakic. Um, this fight is pretty interesting. Let me just start off by saying I might be a little biased towards Justin Ledet because he actually lives where I live. I'm not from here, but he's fighting out of Houston, Texas. But as, as far as the matchups are concerned, I think Alexa Kamar is pretty basic. Um, he's a strong, powerful young kid, pretty explosive. Um, sort of similar to uh, Odie Osborne. Uh, they're, they're actually both coincidentally coming off the contenders, coming off a contend contender series win, and it's just hard to project these guys when they don't have a lot of experience going into rounds two and three. Same for Odie Osborne. Um, Alexa Kamar doesn't really have a lot of experience in rounds two and three. So it's kind of hard to project their game overall. But I think it's going to be striker versus striker here. I think Justin Lydia actually has more tools to win. Versatility is on his side. But I think if Justin Collette, Justin Lydia can stay away from the power, I think he can. he's a better striker. And I think he can outbox 
Alexa Kmart uh, to a decision win, maybe finish him late. If uh, Kamur doesn't have that cardio that I can't say he does or he doesn't have, in that contender series fight, I actually thought he was slowing down after that first round. Uh, it looked like he was sucking winning after that first round. He still got the finish in round two. Uh, beautiful flying knee knockout. But if you go back and watch that fight, I felt like he was sort of sucking win after that first round. And I I don't think his cardio is there. Um, so yeah, I think if Justin Ledet can just sort of survive that first round, um, I think he can take over in rounds two and three, similar to the last fight like I was talking about. And I think he can outbox him fairly easy here and I think he can win a decision maybe finish him in round two or three uh, so the pick's gonna be Justin Ledet here uh, via unanimous decision win maybe a TKO like I said um, the next fight is gonna be Nazrat Hakparas versus Drew Dober uh, this is probably the most excited uh, exciting bout of the evening for me at least this is um, Hakkaras is coming off a win versus Hakeem Silva. I actually cashed in that fight. I had the under two and a half rounds. The first round, I was a little worried. I was like, man, this, the feeling out process was a little extended, and I thought it was going on a little too long. But in that second round, he he made a, a, a really good read. Um, Silva was winding up for a hook, and Hakkaras just hit him with a straight shot down the middle, and it was, it was perfect timing, beautiful punch. Uh, put Hakeem Silva out. Um, but yeah, I, I think overall Hakkaras is a really good fighter. The, my biggest problem with a lot of young strikers is they can't strike going backwards. But I think Hakkaras has a lot of versatility. And I've seen uh, some things in the past to where he can't strike going backwards. He's a good counter fighter. He, he makes reads. And I just think he's a good young prospect. And I think a win over Drew Dober can take him to the next level here. But um, let's not look past Drew Dober because... Drew Dober is uh, as tough as they come. He's coming off a, a win over Polo Reyes. Um, before that, it was a loss to Benil Dariush. But previous to Dariush, he was on a three-fight win streak. Um, but yeah, um, what I saw on tape for Drew Dober, these last two fights against Polo Reyes and Benil Dariush, he came out like a bat out of hell in both fights. And I think for him to have success here versus Hakkaras, I think he needs to do the exact same thing. And he needs to step on the gas early against the younger, uh, inexperienced fighter. I think if he wants to have success, he's going to need to push Hakkaras back. He's going to need to keep him on the back foot. And uh, he's going to need to sustain pressure uh, in the striking game. Uh, maybe mix it up with uh, grappling. But um, I honestly don't see this fight um, being engaged or anyone engaging in the grappling. I think this is going to be... A very explosive fight, a very fun fight. This is probably my pick for fight of the night, if you ask me. Uh, I have a play in this fight. And based off what I'm saying, I think you can guess what it is. Uh, you know I like prop bets. So um, overall, I just think this is going to be a very explosive fight. Um, if you ask me, I actually do think this line is a little too wide. I think there's value on Drew Dober here. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Nakaraz or Nazareth, uh takes him out in second or first round maybe but this is going to be a very fun fight that's all i have to say about this one there's going to be fireworks do not go and take a piss during this fight do not blink during this fight it's going to be a very fun fight uh next fight is tim elliott versus askar askarov and uh i'm right now i'm kind of contemplating a play in this fight tim elliott's coming off a loss versus davison figure figuero Figueredo, I'm sorry. Previous to that, he won versus he won against Mark De La Rosa. Askar Askarov is coming off a win against Brandon Moreno. Um, I'm sort of thinking about pulling the trigger on Tim Elliott here. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. A very small play, but I just think Tim Elliott, um, more experienced fighter in here. He does have losses, but they're against. Stevenson Figueredo and Demetrius Johnson, Ben Wynn was kind of a bad loss, but I just think, I don't think Askar Askarov's hands um, are there yet. I think Tim Elliott can pressure him, uh, out grapple him. Askar Askarov does, uh, is a little too comfortable for my liking on his back. I think Tim Elliott probably has better overall grappling here. 
so yeah, we're, right now I'm sort of contemplating a bet on Tim Elliott. I don't think I'm gonna pull the trigger right now, but as of right now, Tim Elliott is plus 125, so maybe I will soon, like I said, a small bet. I just think over the course of 15 minutes, I think Tim Elliott can outpace him, outgrapple him, and I think he can win a, a decision here. Honestly, I thought Brandon Moreno won that fight against Askarov. Uh, based on where they were in Mexico and Brandon's backyard, I I was sort of confused as to how the judges gave that to Askarov and not Moreno there. A completely different matchup when you think about it, but I honestly do think Elliot has all the tools here to win. I don't know. I really don't know why he's the underdog. Um not too high on Askar Askarov overall because like I said he I felt he lost to Brandon Moreno and I think Tim Elliott has all the tools to beat Askar Askarov with the wrestling the pace the pressure I think he can act, out grapple him to a decision win uh, stay tuned but no bet no official bet here but like I said contemplating a bet on Tim Elliott okay so the next fight is Andre Feely versus Sadiq Yusuf I think this fight, there's a lot of implications. There's t maybe top, top five, top ten type implications. This is a very important fight for both fighters. Uh, Andre Feely is coming off two wins against Shamer Marais and Miles Jury. You could say he could possibly be on a five win streak right now if you, if you thought he'd beat Michael Johnson, that'd be a five win streak right now. Sadiq Yusuf, probably one of the best one. Uh, up and coming 145 pounders in the division right now. I know a lot of people are high on him. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty high on him too. I like his fight style. I like his game. I think there are some questions uh, on both sides here, but um, it's hard to dismiss um, all the people saying they think Sadiq Yusuf's the next big thing. I can see it. I agree with it, but I, I still do think there are some questions um, on his game. But, um, He's coming off of, uh, he's actually on a five fight win streak. Coming off a win against Gabriel Benitez not too long ago, a couple months ago. As far as the matchup is concerned, I think this is going to be just like the Drew Dober Nazareth fight. It's going to be a very explosive fight. Um, I think a big factor in this fight could be the low kicks of Sadiq Yusuf. I think that's going to be a, a, a really big factor here because. We've seen Andre Feely, uh, he's susceptible to the low kick. Uh, he has a hard time with a low kick in his last, in his last fight actually against Shaman Marais. Shaman Marais kicked him about three times and it looked like his leg was already giving out. So I think that could be a big factor here. If Sadiq can get off on that low kick, um, I think the chances of Andre Feely winning come way down um, because that's gonna force Andre Feely to be a little over aggressive and that's not the fight he wants to fight. He wants to stay on the outside. He wants to jab Sadiq Yusuf. He wants to stay away from the low kick and he wants Sadiq Yusuf to come to him and maybe get a little frustrated chasing him around the octagon because if you take away the low kick, if Sadiq Yusuf didn't have such a good low kick, I think, or if he didn't have that tool at all, I think you can analyze this fight and you can say Andre Feely has a, a huge path to, path to victory here, an easy path to victory, but like I said, that low kick is going to be a huge factor in this fight because if it's effective early, that's going to force Andre Feely out of his element, sort of like it did with uh, Shaman Marais. Like I said, three kicks and it looked like Feely's leg was giving out. Um, he landed a perfect head kick fight that changed the fight. I think if you take away that head kick, um, that could be a completely different fight. He might have, I, personally, I thought maybe he was on his way to losing to Shaman Marais, but um. Andre Feely has to avoid that low kick at all costs. If he if he lets Sadiq Yusuf get it off, um, it's, I think it's going to be a very bad night for him. But overall, I think this is um, the tactician, the more tactical fighter. I think is Andre Feely without a doubt here. But Sadiq Yusuf has some has some next level power, man, and uh, it's a it's a scary 145 pound dude. So Andre Feely has to has to stay away from that power. He's going to have to jab. Uh, circle the octagon, but I think, like I said, the biggest thing here is that low kick. And I think it could change the whole fight. Um, it's going to be a very fun fight, just like the Nazareth fight. Don't blink in this fight. 
it's going to be an amazing fight and I think it's going to finish. I'm fairly confident it's going to finish. I have a bet in this fight. I think I just gave it away, possibly. I don't care. It's all right. Don't blink in this fight. This is going to be a very fun fight. So next fight on the card is, uh, well, Macy Barber versus Roxanne Modafferi. I mean, I really don't have much to say in this fight. I bet against Macy Barber her last fight, and it didn't it didn't work out very well. Let me just say that her last fight, she's coming off a pretty bad, a pretty good knockout win against Jillian Robertson. I thought Jillian Robertson would sort of expose Macy Barber in a way. She gets her on the ground, and I thought she was just gonna take over and just make uh, just make uh, Macy Barber look pretty stupid on the ground, but. She had no chance when she clinched up with uh, Macy Barber. Um, she just shrugged her off and uh, she got a KO win in round one. And um, another thing is, I think the people behind Macy Barber, um, she's at a good camp now. She's out of uh, fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I think it was with Duke Rufus and those guys. But yeah, um, Ben Askren is working very closely with Macy Barber and. Like I said, my biggest question in her game was her ground game and her wrestling game. But if she's working closely with Ben Askren, I, I think that's a very good sign. And my doubts about her game as far as the, the ground game goes, it, it sort of cancels that out. Because if she can, she can grow into a good defensive wrestler, it's not even going to matter. And I, I honestly think Jenna Robson is probably a better offensive grappler than Roxanne Modafferi. On the mat, I probably, I probably think Robertson's better too on the mat. But I just thought Robertson had um, a pretty good shot of getting Macy to the mat, and turns out she didn't have a good chance at all. Um, she just, she did exactly what she was supposed to do, I guess, in that fight. And uh, she just, she got the KO in round one, and she made Dylan Robert look stupid. She made me look stupid. Um, right now. Macy Barber is minus minus 900 here. I mean, if you want to throw some beer money on Roxanne Modafferi, uh, go ahead. But, yeah, I don't, I don't have very strong feelings in this fight. Macy Barber, she's on this card for a reason, on the Conor McGregor card. She's on this card for a reason, and I think the UFC knows what they're doing here. I think it's going to be probably an easy round one or round two KO for Macy Barber, just like it was her last few fights. So, yeah, that does it for the prelims. Um, I have my Twitter link in the bio. Like I said, I have a free bet. I probably gave away some free bets um, just by listening to what I say here. But yeah, uh, free bet of the night is fight doesn't go to decision for Brian Kelleher and uh, Odie Osborne. I think that fight, without a doubt, is not seeing the judges' scorecard. It's going to be a very fun fight, and that fight is going to finish. Bookmark it.